Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a second year engineering student at Jesus College in the University of Cambridge. And today I'm going to be talking about the ANGER, which is the entrance exam for engineering at Cambridge University. I did the ANGER in 2019. I remember not really knowing what to expect and neither did my school. And so I felt quite apprehensive and unprepared when it came to the exam day. I since received my offer and now that I'm at university, I work in outreach with real admissions tutors who give advice to applicants. I've also worked with organisations such as UniReach for two years, giving admissions advice to people as a mentor. So this is what I learned both going through the process myself and from mentoring for two years and working with the university. I'm going to go over the format, my preparation advice and my advice for the exam itself. So as I mentioned before, the ANGER is the entrance exam for engineering at Cambridge. You will have to sit it no matter what college you apply to. It is also worth checking if the college you're applying to requires you to do STEP, which is a separate exam. So the ANGER is two hours long and it's split into two sections. Section one is maths and physics, 20 questions, and advanced maths and physics, 20 questions. And that is 60 minutes long. Section two is advanced physics, 20 questions, and that section is 60 minutes long. So overall, you have two hours. The exam is no calculator and entirely multiple choice. Because it's multiple choice, the marking is based entirely on answers and not on working out. You might see information online that says that your work solutions will be taken into account in the second half of the paper. However, this changed in 2019. Now, the only thing your examiners will receive is your answers. Unlike other entrance exams, uh, there is no required score for the ANGER and you will likely never find out what you got because the results are not released. So I still don't know how I did on my entrance exam. According to the Cambridge website, most applicants will get around 50% of the marks. So this is quite a different exam to approach other than the ones you will have already been doing where you're aiming for 80, 90% to get the top grades. Most applicants will get around 50% of the marks. Very, very few people get above 80%, so please don't be concerned if you think you've done badly. It's also worth pointing out that the entrance exam is not the be-all and end-all. It's not looked at in isolation. It will be looked at alongside your personal statement, your performance at interview if you do one, and your grades, school and personal circumstances are also taken into account. It's also an exam that not many people tend to finish because it's so tight for time. This is something that we'll cover a bit later. So my first piece of preparation advice is to use the specification to guide your prep. When I came to do the ANGER in 2019, uh, I checked the specification and I actually hadn't done one of the topics that's covered in the exam paper because we hadn't reached it yet in my A-level course. All of the content is based on A-levels. You won't have to learn anything new, but you might not have reached everything that they want you to know. So I had to teach myself the EM waves topic, which we hadn't reached in physics yet. I asked for some help from my physics teacher, but definitely check the specification to make sure you've covered everything so you're not caught out on exam day with something you haven't covered yet. Keep continuing your A-level revision. Like I said, you don't need to know anything new. The anger is about applying the knowledge that you already have in different ways. So you don't need any further knowledge. You've just got to practice applying it in an unfamiliar context. The biggest piece of preparation advice is to do past papers. It's not like an exam you will have sat before. You need to get used to the question style. There are lots and lots of past exams on the CAM website. I mentioned that the exam changed in 2019. It was just the marking style. The past papers before 2019 are still perfectly good to practice. The question style is very, very similar, if not exactly the same. So rest assured, that's still good practice. One of the most important things to do when you're doing these past papers is to try and do some of them in timed conditions. Like I mentioned earlier, not many people tend to finish the anger. If you actually break it down, you've got 40 questions in section one and 60 minutes to do it. So that's only a minute and a half per question, which is not a lot of time. And you're not used to churning out answers that fast, especially when they're problem solving based like the anger. So what you need to get used to doing is learning when to stop with a question so if you've been trying to solve a question for three minutes and it's just not happening, you've just got to guess and move on. And this is something that comes from practice. Also, as tempting as it is to use your calculator, you won't have it on the day. So when you're practicing the papers, try not to use your calculator. Make sure before the day of the exam, you've done at least one paper full time without a calculator, just so you know what it's going to be like on the day. And I mentioned STEP earlier, even if you don't have to sit STEP as part of your application, STEP papers are great practice to get your problem solving skills up to scratch. 
So I'd recommend doing some step questions as well in the days leading up to the exam. This is also good interview practice if you get to that point in the application process. So for exam technique, my biggest piece of advice is to keep a really close eye on the time. You're really, really tight for time in the anger and it's really easy to get carried away, especially when you're in the zone and you've got adrenaline. If you don't know how to do a question, then guess it's not worth spending five to ten minutes on one question when it's one mark and it's worth the same amount as every other question. You could be doing others that you know how to do. Just guessing one question is way better than wasting your time on it. It's really an act of knowing when to stop and knowing when to move on, uh, which can only be done from practice. But in the exam, uh, try not to get too hung up on the questions you can't answer. Remember that most applicants will only get 50% and it's okay and move on and try not to think about it. I probably didn't confidently answer more than 50% of my questions in my exam. And this is okay because you'll make an educated guess and a lot of the time that'll be right because it's all multiple choice. And since these exams are supposed to test your problem solving and how you deal with an unfamiliar question, it might not be obvious how to approach it. Stay calm. If you don't know how to answer a question, think logically. Practice papers help hugely with this because you'll start to spot repeat questions, spot patterns from year to year. You'll see a question go, oh, I remember something like this coming up before and now I know how to tackle it. The way I structured my exam is that for each 60 minute section, I spent 55 minutes working through it. And in the last five minutes, I just went over every question that I hadn't yet answered and made a guess like completely, well, not random, but an educated guess for every other question because you can't lose marks for getting the wrong answer. So I recommend taking five minutes at the end of each paper to just put an answer in for everything you haven't got to yet, even if you haven't read the question. You can pick up quite a few marks doing this since it's all multiple choice. Once it's finished, try not to second guess how well you did. Um, like I said, you'll never find out, so it's not worth worrying about. And you'll likely not be able to judge how well you did anyway, since it's all multiple choice and lots of people score low. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, it's definitely the video that I needed before I sat the anger. If you want any more guidance, then check out UniReach. They can match you with a mentor from Oxbridge to answer any questions you might have. And if you take away anything from this video, it's practice, 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 and keep an eye on the time. Best of luck with the rest of your application.